the simplest possible solution is going to be the best. Let's keep it simple. And I got a job in London with an engineering design contractor. And the first morning they said, we have to go and meet an architect. He's talking about it's a different kind of architecture that we don't really understand. You might understand what he's talking about. So would you go and turn up? So I turned up to meet Norman Foster and we started talking about buildings. He's got some very interesting ideas and a very interesting way of looking at things. And I think we could do something. So I took the job and I was there for the next 20 years. Norman and I as well, we were pushing always at the technologies that were available pre-packaged engineering, which is really what Norman was trying to do. Don't build things on site, make them off site, bring them to, put it together to make it work. We did a lot of working with industry who could do things. We'd say, well, if you could do that, could you do this? So we were actually designing the product. Well, that's what it was really all about. It's, it's, the, it's the discussions around the tables, it's the sketches, it's the, uh, it's the arguments. Uh, so that collaborative process, backs and, backs and forwards, was so important. Uh, one is the, the um, single storey building we did for the temporary head office they had in Portsmouth, which was a, a single storey steel frame building um, with uh, a, a huge deep plan. A sort of deep plan that everybody say you can't do deep plans that deep, it, impossible. And that was a real demonstration of economy, of the scale, very simple materials, very repetitive structures. Well, Rainer Banner, he was always interested in Norman's work because he was interested in architecture as a whole, holistic thing. He understood about it. And when he came to London to talk with Norman, uh, he, uh, I remember he, he, he said something like to Norman, uh, what he understood what he was doing, and he said, there's somebody else behind this. I want to know, who are you working with? He says to Norman. And Norman said, well, Norman, Lauren's our man. He, we, he, he, he looks after, he's looking after all the environment. Really good thing about working with Norman at that time, there was never sort of one simple initial answer, this is how we're going to do it. it. It was a development process. It dovetailed with the idea of, at that time, of open plan offices, um, which is all about shared environments, uh, qualities of spaces provided, teamwork, the acoustic environment, and the atmosphere, and the temperatures, and the air movement, and everything. The whole way that the Willis Faber, the very big floor plans, one floor behind the other, so you look up, so suddenly you can walk into the, in this hugely deep floor, you come in through the front door, and you're in the middle of the atrium, because it goes straight up there. It's fantastic. It is one of the most highly integrated servicing systems. That wonderful section, which shows the structure, the cladding, the drainage, the roof drainage, the services, the access for the lighting, it's all there, the whole thing, and that is real integration. Uh, it's not just what it looks like, it's how it works as well. When you build a building of that size, you will have to have an electrical supply and then distribute all the electricity, electrical services through the building. Now, it involves a thing called a substation. So where does the substation go? Well, I said the right place for the substation is right in the middle right in the middle of the plan. Then all the cables that go out to do the services are shorter and smaller. So it's, that's going to be good engineering to do that. So he said, well, we'll just make a nice straight track. And we'll use that, he said, for, for deliveries for all the storage. It was all about component buildings, framework, flexible interiors, a common, frame, a common framework into which you could do, put different functions. And Greenford showed that that could be done. So you had this 
single level steel frame structure, services on top, pre-packaged, dropped in with helicopters, uh, and then inside an infill which could be offices, computer rooms, workshops, storage racks, all under the same umbrella, uh, umbrella structure. And that's, and that sh he showed that those original ideas of commonality of structure, of basic structure with infill, which could change with time, underneath, very important building. Hammersmith, of course, is a, was a, a city centre develops. They are a hub for activity, movement, and everything like, like that. So creating a centre, creating a place was vital. End Project, I think, was one of the very greatest we ever did. Uh, it could have been so good because it had the, the complexities of city life, of movement, of transport, meeting, working, eating, everything. I mean, that was, of course, that was a very advanced thinking of the steel frame. And for that one, we were actually going to um, uh, provide, the, the, do the engineering services there using uh, something not much used in housing, perhaps a little more these days, of actually starting to introduce air conditioning into the house. Part of the joy of working with Norman, with the practice, was that um, when it came to the presentations of the ideas, he and Michael and Birkin would be there, but, but so would I. So for example, the Hong Kong Bank, when it came to the interviews before the competitions decided, there were five architects presenting, only one had his, had his services engineer there as well. Only one, that was us. The integration of structure and services in that and the economy of that structure, that lamella diagrid structure with top lighting, controlled top lighting into it, air distribution. Um, uh, it was just the most wonderful internal environment and so highly developed. Uh, its origins without any question, is the Sainsbury Centre. That's a very important project because it was the first, the first airport terminal uh, which was talking about concourse spaces with a, an, an umbrella roof. So we designed it. That's the first time we used a computer of, to any great degree um, was to uh, lay out the services underneath the floor, underneath the undercroft, um, so that every service had its location and it could be checked before the drawings were made to build, to make the ducts or make the cableways and that sort of thing, that they didn't clash with each other. Well, Bucky, a uh, lovely man to work with. I was really involved with Bucky right at the very end of his life, actually. And in fact, when we were starting, we were working on the Skybreak house, the double skin where you could close it up, you could follow the sun, you could close it up at night. It was about uh, how, you, how you used the, this double structure to be the weather protection and you could track it round so you could follow the sun round. That's the wonderful thing about foster builders, they're easy to understand in mechanical terms. Well, how does it work? How does the building work? It's the architecture comes through in the services and I think that's, the, that's what it's all about. It's what I, I lived with for 20 years, you know, the fantastic 20 years of my life. I was just very lucky. I counted myself really lucky to have been involved with Norman all those years. Fantastic.